Hello and thank you for joining us on this edition of NHK Newsline. I'm Raja Pradhan in Tokyo. North Korea's leader has trumpeted his country's military might at a massive parade. South Korean media are reporting 50,000 people participated in Thursday's event. Kim Jong-un also said his military must accelerate its readiness, claiming the United States and its followers provoke the Korean Peninsula. The North state-run TV broadcast thousands of troops, tanks and vehicles carrying weapons during its evening programming. The event also showed off other military hardware, including what the North calls an intercontinental ballistic missile, the Hwasong-15. It was test-launched last November. Kim claims it's capable of striking the U.S. mainland with a nuclear payload. The massive parade marked the 70th anniversary of the military's founding. The day is typically observed in April, but North Korea decided last month to move it up. This comes one day before the opening ceremony of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. The timing has been panned by the United States and has been labeled threatening by the South. And as the North hyped its show of strength, the American vice president did the same. Mike Pence is also highlighting regional alliances as he visits South Korea for the Olympics. He met with the country's president, Moon Jae-in, to reaffirm their North Korea policies. We'll try to utilize the opportunity as much as possible so the Pyeongchang Games can become the venue that leads to dialogue for the denuclearization of the peninsula and the establishment of peace. That the United States of America will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder in our effort to bring maximum pressure to bear on North Korea until that time comes when they finally and permanently uh, and irreversibly abandon their nuclear and ballistic missile ambitions. Pence assured Moon the U.S. will work with allies in the region until they achieve that goal. Earlier in the day, Pence addressed American troops in Tokyo. He called for caution over the recent easing of tensions following Pyongyang's decision to participate in the Olympics. But sadly, despite our efforts over the decades, every step of the way North Korea has answered the overtures of the wider world and our two nations with willful deception, broken promises and endless and escalating provocations. Pence also spoke about the regime's human rights abuses. He warned the North not to underestimate the U.S. military strength. Our forces are ready and our nation is resolved. As the old book says, a soldier does not bear the sword in vain. Let the world know we will defeat any attack and meet any use of conventional or nuclear weapons with a response that is rapid, overwhelming, and effective. The speech comes a day after Pence met with Japan's prime minister and reaffirmed the alliance between their countries. He also said the U.S. is set to unveil the strongest sanctions yet against the North. Anticipation is building for the Winter Olympics set to officially kick off on Friday. Nearly 500 people from the north are now in South Korea. Earlier, James Tengan spoke with NHK World's Yukari Kondo in Pyeongchang. The world's attention is focused on the games for more than just sports. The North Koreans are a central attraction. All eyes are on the welcome ceremony for North Korean athletes this morning. The athletes were fated to song and dance by South Korean sports officials as well as a female North Korean marching band. This kind of Olympic spirit is endangered by the tensions surrounding the Korean Peninsula. Yukari, what about South Korea's stance? How is the South Korean president going to handle all this discord during the Olympics? As you say, Moon Jae-in has a very difficult task, but he also has a good opportunity to mediate between the U.S. and the North. He's on the same page with the U.S. on the North Korean nuclear issue, but he cannot let the disagreements lead to a military clash on the peninsula. So Moon has urged the North to participate in the Olympics and to begin talks with the U.S. He granted exception, including South Korea air flights to the north and the entry of a North Korean cargo passenger ship to a port. The flights and the ship are banned by the sanctions against the north. 
and the no seemed to be a conciliatory mood as well. South Korean officials say the North will send Kim Jong-un's sister, Kim Yo-jong, to attend the opening ceremony of the Games. It will be her debut in diplomacy. Earlier, the North announced the country's ceremonial leader, Kim Yo-nam, will head the delegation. The South Korean government announced the President Moon will have lunch with the North delegation on Saturday. And the U.S. Vice President Pence has not excluded the possibility of meeting with senior officials from the North. The North Korean delegation is scheduled to stay in the South for three days. At least during the time, political maneuvering among the two Koreas and the U.S. will share worldwide attention with the world's biggest winter sports competitions. Yukari Kondo, NHK World, Pyeongchang. Now, a North Korean orchestra has performed in the South on the eve of the opening ceremony of the Pyeongchang Olympics. Dozens of protesters gathered outside to show their opposition to the event. More than 140 members of the Samjion Orchestra held a concert in the city of Kannun. The MC said the orchestra has come to celebrate the Olympics as part of the same ethnic group. The audience of about 800 enjoyed a North Korean song with the title Nice to Meet You and a 1980s hit song originally performed by a South Korean woman. Outside the venue, people who welcomed North Korea's participation in the Olympics waved the Korean unification flag and chanted, We are one. But not everyone was enthusiastic. <laughs> Conservative opponents raised the national flags of South Korea and the United States. At one time, the two sides confronted each other with a barricade of policemen in between to maintain order. China's foreign minister says he hopes North Korea's participation in the Olympics will pave the way for talks with the United States. Wang Yi told reporters in Beijing he supported the recent interaction between the two Koreas over the North's participation. <laughs> Dialogue between North and South Korea during the Olympics should be a first step towards everyday uninterrupted talks. I hope they'll result in discussions between the North and other countries, particularly the U.S. Wang says all U.N. member states should implement Security Council sanctions, but he says they should refrain from provocative action. The remark is thought to be an attempt to call on the U.S. and other countries not to step up pressure on the North through another round of economic sanctions.